This video is brought to you by BetUS Sportsbook and Casino. Welcome back. It's time for the next edition of Silver and Black Today, an Odyssey Sports original podcast covering the Las Vegas Raiders. Also heard on the radio in Las Vegas on Sundays on 101.5 FM KDON and also on the bet in Las Vegas on 98.5 HD2. So appreciate our Las Vegas audience always being with us. You can also find us on YouTube, Rumble, Facebook, x.com wherever you want to watch us you can also watch the show we appreciate the subscription and the notification bells being rung there and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your audio scott Branson, along with my partner mo moten mo is the senior nfl writer at bleacher report also raiders columnist at sportsnot.com where you can also find my work both writing and video follow him on x.com at mo moten m-o-e-m-o-t-o-n and I am at LV Gully, the show, SNB Today. Well, the Raiders have their starting quarterback. How do you feel about that, Raider Nation? It is Gardner Minshew. Mo, you and I had talked about, well, it seemed like if it was close, it was going to be Aiden O'Connell, the young kid. They drafted in the fourth round out of Purdue last season, played some nice football during the course of the year, had his troubles too. But we all figured, hey, well, not why not go with the young guy? You got Minshew backing him up. But instead... Antonio Pierce made this statement. We're going to play real quickly for you what Coach Pierce said when he announced the decision on Sunday about Minshew as the starting quarterback. Oh, we're uh, Gardner Minshew is going to be the starting quarterback the 2024 season. Uh, myself, Telesco, and Luke Getzey discussed it this morning. Uh, a lot of things went into it. It wasn't based off of last night. There's a lot of factors. So uh, we feel like Gardner gives us the best opportunity to get off to a fast start, and that's what we're going with. We support them. Our team's behind it. Our staff's behind it. Our organization's behind it. Yeah, experience, um, the operation, the processing, um, just everything we saw in practice. Some of it showed up in the games. A lot of stuff we can get better at. I don't think anything here is a, a, a finished product, but based off of where we want to go in the first uh, quarter of the season, we feel like Gardner gives us the best opportunity. All right, there you go, Antonio Pierce with the decision. By the way, the second half of that clip was about Aiden O'Connell. Those were comments I didn't I didn't clarify those at the beginning. He talked about picking Minshew and why, and then he talked about O'Connell when he was asked a question about what it meant for, for Aiden in this team. And so, Mo, I mean, it's interesting. Surprising in one sense, but not in another. We talked about the fact that, listen, the reason the Raiders signed Gardner Minshew, and I just wrote a piece yesterday on Sports Not about this, was that the position of quarterback with the Raiders – is unsettled it will remain unsettled so what tom telesco and antonio pierce did was they want to survive in 2024 so that's why they signed gardner Minshew, a great insurance policy a veteran who's proved that he can get a team close to or into the playoffs perhaps like he did last year with indianapolis um tell me your initial thoughts when you saw this were you surprised at all by it since none of these two guys kind of made the best case for the starting job and frankly on saturday against the cowboys Minshew was not not that great either, but instead he goes with the veteran. It surprised me in a sense that I guess because Antonio Pierce said that he was going to make a decision after the Cowboys game, you would assume that the Cowboys game had a lot of heavy had a heavy factor in the decision. Now, of course, it wasn't the entire uh, it wasn't the the entire thing uh, they considered, but it was it was a big factor in this, right? So. You mentioned it. Gardner Minshew was disjointed on on the field when he had his drives into the second quarter. Outside of a long 48-year-old, 48 48-yard 48 pass to Trey Tucker, uh, it wasn't good for Gardner Minshew. He was under 50% uh, 50 completion rate again. Aiden O'Connell wasn't that much better, but you saw that Aiden O'Connell established his rhythm in the third quarter, led a, led a scoring drive for a touchdown. But, of course, he threw that pick six. I saw a lot of people saying the pick six – Pick six did him in. I don't think so. I, I I go back to my original point, and I probably shouldn't have changed my stance on this because if you remember, Scott, originally I said Gardner mm -hmm. Mitchell was going to win the job because of the money they paid him. Mm -hmm. You don't pay a bridge gap quarterback. You don't sign a bridge gap quarterback to a two-year, $25 million deal unless he legitimately has a shot to win the job. Now, let's remember Tom Telesco comes in. He didn't draft eight in O'Connell. That was, that was Dave Ziegler. So I, I feel like not that the competition didn't matter over the summer, but if you're including Tom Telesco, 
who signed Gardner Minshew to that two-year, $25 million deal with a $15 million guarantee, then that's going to weigh heavily into the decision. They're not going to tell you that. But if they're pushing that this is a real competition, that that should be, I don't want to say irrelevant, but that shouldn't matter as much as the as what the two players put on the field. Now, as you said, it wasn't inspiring for either player. But from what I've seen, I remember our friend Q Myers over at Radio Nation Radio 920 AM said that there was a part before the preseason game started, there was a stretch before the preseason game started that Gardner Minshew put together consecutive solid practices. Mm. They weren't great, but he had a slight, in his mind, in Q's mind, Gardner Minshew had a slight edge because he had stacked some good practices, whereas Aiden was still kind of inconsistent. So I think that also played into it, what they saw at practice. Of course, we can't see all of what goes on at practice, but from uh, what Q said, and I trust Q's eyes, uh, Gardner Minshew had a stretch where he had some solid practices so i'm sure that factored into it the other thing is and and i and i give credit because i don't i'm not into stealing people's words or thunder but jt the <laughs> brick got on after the decision was made and he said if you think about it you look at the defenses the Raiders have to play to start the season the charges with khalil mack and joey bosa they got uh miles garrett early in the season mm-hmm. the baltimore ravens defense even though they lost their defensive coordinator is still defense to respect because they've been at the top of the league with their defense for quite some time now if you look at the defenses the Raiders are going to play early in the season, you probably want an experienced quarterback who can move, especially with the way the offensive line has played in the preseason. You want a guy who's going to give you that flexibility. Yeah, and I think, too, we talked about it a couple shows ago, about leadership on the field. And listen, it's not that Aiden O'Connell doesn't have skill set, because we, we've talked about that a million times, too. But at the I, I think it goes back to something else we discussed, Mo, which was I felt like the first four games of this Raiders season are vital. If they're going to have a good season, what that does that mean making the playoffs would be great if they did? Even if they don't, if they finish above 500, would be a good year, I think, with what they've gone through and what they're doing. Um, to do that, I think you got to get off to a pretty good start. You can't go 0-2 or 1-3 and, and I think stick around. I really don't think so. It's a difficult start to the season for them and i know i know raider nation's gonna say oh beat the chargers blah blah blah. maybe maybe not you don't know until this team goes out we've seen and we'll talk about in the next segment some of the concerns we saw with other aspects of play in the raiders loss to the cowboys including defense and the offensive line but when it comes to the quarterback position as i said in my piece yesterday mo look it's uncertainty this is a lot of raider nation felt good because of the defense and because of the offensive weapons absolutely and I've had a lot of people respectfully tell me that I, I was wrong saying that the quarterback means that much because look at this example, look at that example. But this is why we told you national media and others have kind of put the Raiders under the radar because that position, a quarterback, is so glaring. And if they don't have an answer, like none of the, neither one of these guys stepped up so much that you're like, well, definitely the guy. Like and get excited about it. I'm not saying Minshew can't succeed. I'm not saying O'Connell can't succeed because we said last time they're both going to play, I think. But this just tells you that this is an unsolved issue, and we knew that going in. So we're not surprised looking at it objectively. I can understand some fans being disappointed. They're excited about the young quarterback or about Minshew, and it just didn't pan out like they thought it would. Antonio Pierce was very blunt about the quarterback competition. He basically Mm -hmm. said neither guy really – stepped up and took the job yeah. but a decision has to be made so when a head coach gives you that assessment that blunt candid assessment that's not going to give you a lot of a lot of optimism so i don't right. blame Raider fans for for being a bit on edge or or, or kind of sure saying no, I, I don't feel good about the season now with the decision made not just not just because Gardner Mitchell won the job over their preferred option of Aiden O'Connor but because of how Antonio Pierce assessed this quarterback competition which we all saw we, 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 I mean, we read the reports, right? We yeah. watched the game on Saturday. Now, uh, against the Vikings in the previous week, it was pretty good for both quarterbacks overall. But to 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 come out that way before a big decision is made and neither quarterback look, looks all that good against Cowboys backups, by the way. These weren't the starters of the Cowboys on the field. These were Cowboys backups. And now uh, the other part of this is, and I and I put this out there on Twitter, that the other side of this is, you got to also understand the Raiders didn't have their best wide receiver on the field, Devontae Adams. 
They didn't have Brock Bowers on the field. He was held out. I believe uh, knee soreness or something. He had some soreness. Didn't play. Looked pretty good against the Minnesota Vikings. And this is a tight end friendly offense. He wasn't out there. And your best offensive lineman, Colton Miller, wasn't out there. So what mm-hmm. you saw against the Cowboys isn't going to be what you necessarily see uh, come the regular season simply because with those three guys back alone, you should see a lot more efficiency. Now, it's also going to be on Garner Minshew, and we'll talk about this. He has to be able to get those simple completions. Yeah. He, he it, it seems that he makes a lot of the routine plays harder than what they have to be. Right. He has to he has to be able to you know focus in, get to his first or second read and move on to the next play. I think sometimes he extends plays when he doesn't have to. Exactly. And and the coaching staff said that as well. And I think you look at the situation Mo and and look, I I think some fans and again, I'm not telling people how to be a fan, but I think there's a little bit of an overreaction here. I, here I am telling you that the problem still remains at quarterback because it does. But again, that's not a surprise. Like you're going to see, I think both of these guys play well at times, but they're neither of them. I don't believe are the answer long term. And so you look at that, and it's a preseason game. Like I would not live and die by how the Raiders lose or look in a preseason game, right? Because they looked really good the last two years in preseason games, and what happened? Right? right. Nothing. They were six and one under Josh McDaniels <laughs> yes. and did nothing. So I wouldn't put too much stock as as bad as they can look at moments on certain things. You know, I'm not I'm not trying to sell you fake optimism because I think there's optimism. But you have to look at the quarterback situation and understand, as we said the last several weeks, it's going to be an up and down thing. You're going to see one guy do really well for a while and then he might struggle and then they might replace him with the other guy. And they'll go back and forth one, two, three, who knows how many times. I think that's where the Raiders are. But to your point, without some of those guys, Brock Bowers, by the way, with the foot injury, a sore foot, they called it. So not I shouldn't call it an injury. It's just banged up. So you look at that and you say to yourself, okay, well, can they still do something good? Yes, they can. But just be realistic about expectations. All the 11, 12 win folks out there, I'd temper that a little bit just because of what we've seen and what the quarterbacks do. Now, again, one of these guys might catch fire in the season. You never know what happens. But I, that's, that's I guess, the thing that I, I say the most is just if your expectations are realistic, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. If they're not, then you'll be disappointed. Scott, we had a caller out from Hudson Valley. I think mm-hmm. it was uh, Dave Casper the Ghost said, you know, I'm, I, you know, seven, seven wins. So he yeah. was in the same seven, eight wins. He was in the same boat as me. And a mm-hmm. lot of times, Scott, when we put out these – Early predictions, we're the bad guys, right? So, <laughs> and then I, and then, and then the roles flip when, when things don't go as some fans want. I, I was yeah. on, I was on Twitter on Sunday I and saw. I had to talk fans off the ledge a bit. Oh, I, yeah. And I gave the same point I gave here is that look, what you saw in the preseason is not what you, necessarily what you're going to see. The, the Raiders' offense in the preseason is not going to be their offense week one. No. I no. just told you the three of their best it, offensive players weren't available and they will should be available week one right and that's where i'm saying too is don't be overly con- you can be concerned right until they yeah. go out and prove it as as antonio pierce i repeat it all the time on the show resume on the grass week one starts here in what 15 days whatever the day, the right number of days is 20 days when it starts and they play the chargers and then they play the raven that's when you need to start looking at how it goes and if they right. look like they did against dallas then you can you can get concerned all you want but i just don't think that the offense will be as bad. And I think going with the veteran, I said it last show that even though Antonio Pierce has some grace period because he's a full first time year coach, you know, he's not going to get fired after one year. It would take something crazy for that to happen. But what I'm saying though, is they, he needs to win. It's the NFL. You got to find who's the best guy. He might like Aiden O'Connell a lot, really want to give him a chance, but it's like, ugh, our first four weeks are tough, man. And so we got to go out with what I think is best. And I think that's exactly what f- f- uh, came into his decision, especially from a leadership route, being under fire on the road two weeks in a row to start the season. It's a tough start, Mo. So the other thing about Aiden O'Connell, why I I felt like Aiden O'Connell was a choice because, again, he sold those, a lot of those Chargers defenders last year, and mm-hmm. he has the upside. Antonio Pierce said you know, Antonio, that Aiden O'Connell has tremendous upside. I think they do believe that Aiden O'Connell has the upside. But – you're also going to have to live with the mistakes, the yes. inexperienced mistakes that he yeah. still is going to make. Remember, Aiden O'Connell hasn't played a full season. So when you watch that game against the Cowboys, he admit he stared down the receiver on that pick six. 
So those are the type of mistakes he's going to still make. And I think the Raiders wanted to avoid those mistakes early in the season because it could really bury them. Because let's think, let's be honest here. If looking at it from the Gardner Minshew side, if the Raiders were to start off one and three or zero and four, and Aiden O'Connell's making a ton of mistakes, people are going to be calling for Gardner Minshew anyway. And on top of that, <laughs> on top of that, people are wondering, wondering are, are we going to be able to keep Devontae Adams happy? Because now yeah, we're one and three, exactly. we're zero and four. Aiden O'Connell's making all these mistakes. Trade deadlines in the it's in a month and a half. What are we going to do now? By the way, Devontae Adams trade rumors are already out there because a lot of people are speculating that because Gardner Mitchell was named the starter, that Devontae Adams is not happy because we've heard Devontae Adams speak glowingly about eight and O'Connell. Basically, that's his guy. Now, yeah. Antonio Pierce, I think I think this is strategically done. When he announced that Gardner Mitchell was a starting quarterback, he said, Everyone in the building is behind it, the organization is behind it. I think that was a message to say, look. Regardless of who said what about whatever quarterback, whichever quarterback, everyone is behind this decision. I think there was a reason he said that. Right. Yeah. And there are people out there who think Gardner Minshew is going to be the next Jim Plunkett or whatever. And that's fine. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, but I think that the, the decision, surprising in one way, not surprising in another, but it, it again shines a light on the quarterback position. The Raiders need to think about this long term. But Tom Telesco came in, had to take care of something now. He didn't have the luxury to wait two or three years. He had to do something to make sure that this team survived. And so that's where we're at with that. So it's going to be interesting how it all unfolds. But we'll find out in a few weeks. That's the beauty of football. you got to play the game. And uh, we'll see how it all goes. All right. We're going to step aside for our first break when we come back. We're going to talk a little more about the Raiders and the Cowboys game. What else did we see? Defense still getting gashed on the run. Some problems in the secondary, too. Don't look as, as fresh as they have in the past or towards the tail end of last season, at least. Should we be concerned about that? I don't know. We'll talk about it when we come back here on Silver and Black. Today, you're with Mo and Scott. We're coming right back. All right. For our video audience, it's that time again. We're going to talk about our good friends at BetUS. Oh, yes. Are you are you ready to uh, uh, start betting here pretty soon, Mo? Have you already – have you have you bet any preseason? I bet a preseason game. Didn't yeah. bet. Thankfully, I didn't go to – Bet US and bet on that Raiders game. I almost did. I almost, <laughs> I almost bet on the Raiders, and then I thought about it and I said, "Well, let me let me hold off because yeah. I understand it's a quarterback competition, but the Raiders haven't shown well. So let me let me hold off on that." But I, I have, and I, I've mostly focused on baseball. Can you believe that? Uh, I do bet baseball, not just on my team, the Mets, but I pick a lot of winners in baseball, and I do it over on Bet US, and I make some money. So it's That's pretty right. good. You got to And by the way, just for listening to or watching, uh, in this case, Silver and Black today, uh, guess what? We're going to give you money. That's right. 125% bonus on your first three deposits at BetUS up to $2,000. You can use the special link that you can find in the description below. Also, uh, in the comments section, you'll find it there. But I I'll tell you what, again, best payouts in the industry, fastest payouts in the industry. Not only that. But if you look at here, you can get a, a, a personal account manager. You want some help. You want somebody to be there for you. You can do that. In addition, uh, I, like I talked about, we're talking about football here. You can bet anything you want. You can go in, check out all the props by the week, which make great things. Like I'll go NFL here and, and just display the games. You can go through here and find out the games, what you're looking at for week one. Try to jump ahead of everybody there, too. They have everything, not only sports and, of, of course, NFL futures and props, but you can even bet politics, you name it, whatever sport, you can do it live at BetUS. So make sure you do that. Again, make sure you use our special link. You will get 125% bonus on your first three deposits, up to $2,000 from our friends at BetUS using our special link from silver and black today so good luck with that mo and i as we go into the season we're going to start sharing these bets and you're going to see me actually make bets live here on the show so you'll be able to see as i make them uh and lock them in for money so so yeah That's we're right. putting our money we, where our mouth is we, right my man we we you know we're not just giving you our plays just to tell you to to <laughs> bet this money we're actually doing it ourselves so we wouldn't tell you to bet anything that we wouldn't bet is, is the deal here that's right. So I want to thank BetUS for sponsoring this live stream and uh, for bringing this video to all of you. So make sure you check out the link below and get your bonus. All right. 
Welcome back to Silver and Black Today, segment number two here on this Tuesday. You're with Scott Branson and Mo Moten. We are talking Raiders football. As always, thank you for subscribing to the podcast wherever you get your audio, as well as subscribing to the video channel and hit that notifications bell so you know every time we have a new video. We do shorts. We do all kinds of stuff, so make sure you check that out. Okay, Mo, we talked all about quarterback in the first segment. This segment, I want to talk about the rest of what we saw, the Raiders' a second preseason game. Uh, I remain concerned about the run defense. We still saw some issues there. Yes, some of those guys played very sparingly up front as far as Wilkins and Max Crosby go. You know they're going to be fine. But we saw, again, a lot of penetration into the second level of the defense. We also saw, at times, the defensive backs against Trey Lance. And listen, yes, there were some backups in there, but also there were some starters in there. Uh, and they just looked a little bit slow to me on, on Saturday. You know who looked particularly slow? Ty and I hate to pick on this person, but what? Tyree Wilson stands uh, I out. I, I understand you're talking run defense here. Yeah. And I understand it was one play that stood out where Trey Lance just kind of makes him look like he's walking in cement. But the Tyree Wilson thing is very concerning because you would think that even if Tyree Wilson can't get to the quarterback, that he can be able to help your run defense. And I, I, I just don't see it. I, mm -hmm. I know we had a caller that said, "Don't write Tyree Wilson off," and that's why I said, "I don't, I don't want, I don't want this to come off as I'm beating up on Tyree Wilson." But he is a top seven pick from last year. That pick is supposed to be able to help you within one to two years, absolutely, best, right? And now we're going into the second year. The Raiders have a run defense problem, but I pointed out, as I pointed out, I believe last show, but Patrick Graham's defense is technically they ha they haven't been good outside of one year. He's been a defense coordinator for five years. He's only had one top 10 run defense. All the others have been, I believe 17th or worse. The Raiders run defense wasn't any good last year either, by the way, I mean, have, I had a tweet out that said the Raiders allowed, uh, I believe it was 110 plus yards in five or six games last mm. year. So, you know, they, they were, they had been getting gashed. I believe it was 130. No, it was 132 yards plus in five to six games last year. So they were getting gashed last year just that people didn't notice it because of the scoring ranking. They were ninth in scoring, so they weren't giving up a lot of points, but they were giving up some yards on the ground. Now, I'm not – I'm not because of the pattern, I'm not saying that the run defense is going to sink this entire defense because we, we saw it struggle last year and even the year before in Graham's first year. If the pass rush is fine, the defense can still be pretty decent. I think it will be. The problem here with the run defense is, will it get worse? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because the way the these backups have been running against the Raiders, uh, you know, defense, even some of the starters, yeah, that's the concerning part. And if and if a guy gets hurt, you know, then what? What happens to your defensive line? So I think what you have to do, if in this, I propose this on my Bleach Report Live. If you want to bolster the run defense a bit, what I would do is base defense for down linemen which means you add another linebacker. On the linebacker field. So instead yeah. of two linebackers on the field, you have a third linebacker on the field, whether that's Luke Masterson or if you think Tommy Eichenberg is ready to play, put a third linebacker out there so that you can patch up your run defense. Because guess what? When you play the Chargers, the Raiders <laughs> go against the Chargers in week one, guess what they're going to do? They're going to run the football with J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, who are familiar with Greg Roman's offense. We know what Greg Roman's M.O. is. He's going to want to run the football. So expect the charges to attempt to run the ball about 35 to 40 times, stick the extra linebacker out there, fill the box. Yeah. And it's interesting. I mean, you look at what the Cowboys were able to do. They, they rushed for 137 yards, 31 rushing plays, by the way. So their average was brought down only 4.4 yards. So not huge. The Raiders uh, uh, only, only rushed half that amount and, and gained four yards per carry and 68 yards total. So although I remain concerned just because of some of the technical things I saw, and you mentioned Wilson and the, the slowness getting off the ball, I think it's true. I mean, the, in the red zone, especially, too, we saw some things there. The Cowboys were 2-2 two, two in the red zone. They were 2-2 two, two goal to go. Uh, they were 1-1 uh, on fourth down. The good news for the Raiders, they were only 2-9 of nine on third down as well. So so the Raiders did, did well at times, Mo, but I look also at the passing. I gave up, uh, they gave up uh, 157 yards. Uh, both teams did not give up a sack again as well. Um, and, and so you look at that and, and you're, you're, you're looking at averaging, they gave up about six yards per pass, which is, uh, you know, not terrible, but not great either. So I think, I think this team, there's a lot of question marks. And to me, I'm not worried about the defense per se, but I definitely would love, we're not going to see it in the third game because we're not going to play starters. But I think that that first week against the Chargers, um, that defense really needs to come out 
and establishes that I means a division game. It's on the road in their in their vacation home down at SoFi. And so I think that 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 defense getting off to a quick start and having having Wilkins in there, having Max Crosby in there full time when they get going in week one, it's going to be a big deal. I just think that that the defense needs to set the tone for this entire team in week one. Yeah, and I I totally understand that point of view, but I'm not trying to walk the rainbow road of unicorns here, but (laughs) we also have to understand you're playing against vanilla defenses anyway in the preseason. So Patrick Graham is not putting out, like, disguising defenses or necessarily scheming up things. Now, you want to play well, of course, but you also got to understand that they're not really game planning up all day and night, planning for week two of the preseason, their defense. It's just that's just not the type of energy you get in the preseason. So I'm not I'm I'm not worried about the defense per se. And as I said, the run defense wasn't good last year either and the Raiders still were ninth in scoring. So you could have a suspect run defense and still have an overall good defense when it comes to keeping teams out of the end zone. As long as the Raiders can keep teams out of the end zone. Exactly. And I, and I hate to say bend but don't break defense in, in terms of the run be, because you want to improve that part of, of the unit that aspect of the unit, but I, I'm not overly concerned about the defense because I, I know a lot of our callers said, can this defense be elite? I still think it could be a top five, top eight unit, mm-hmm. uh, even if it is ranked 15th or 16th or 17th against the run. You just got to still be able to keep teams out of the end zone, but yeah. you don't you don't, you don't, don't want it to be a, a so much of a glaring weakness that teams are running up and down for 200 yards on you either. No, and I I just think that the, the deficiencies we talked about at not knowing who your quarterback is uh, long term, uh, we've talked about it all offseason. And fans have frankly talked to us about it, too. And I think they mostly agree, which is, OK, but at least the defense, the defense can carry us in moments when the offense needs a little bit of help. And that's true. So so that's why. They, and again, I'm I'm not pressing any panic button yet. Again, preseason. Right. So it's pre-season. practice. Yeah. But uh, when they hit week one, that'll be the, the the proof in the pudding. We'll see how they are good. Now, I'll switch to the offense. Look at that offensive line. Again, like you said, not complete, not uh, everybody's back playing. And if I look at uh, the runners behind that line, let's let's focus on Zamir White for a second. Four carries, 23 yards, 17 of them on one carry, average 5.8 per carry. Alexander Madison, five carries, 15 yards, average of three uh, uh, Dylan Lobby also had three carries uh, for eight yards, so just some some light work there. Um, how you feel so far about what you've seen from Zamir White? I think there's been the moments where you're like, okay, cool. Uh, I don't get caught up on numbers for running back in the preseason because they're not – I mean, four carries is four carries. It's nothing. So I, I think Zamir White with that line, especially when you get your starters back in there, Mo, I think he's shown that he's got the the strength and the ability, as we saw last year, to to be the guy until he's not uh but what have you seen so far what do you like what don't you like so a few things what i like what i don't like in a neutral comment i'll start with the neutral comment it it seems like alexander madison is going to take a a fair number of touches away from zamir white early down so i know a lot of people ask it can zamir white be the workhorse running back Mm -hmm. based on what i've seen from the usage the distribution i believe Samir White has had 10 carries and Alexander Madison has had eight carries in these two preseason games. I think that's uh, predictable. That's 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 a foreshadowing of what we're going to see uh, in the regular season. I think the, the split between them are early downs. I don't want to say it's going to be 50-50. I think Samir White will probably have more carries, but it'll be like 12 to 8. It'll be like a it'll be like a 60-40 or a 65-35 split between Samir White and Alexander Madison on, on early downs. Alexander Madison may be also involved. In the short passing game, but I think Dylan Albi and Amir Abdullah, assuming they both make the roster, will be involved in that aspect too. The other thing about the, the run game, you also, as you mentioned, offensive line is not whole. No Colton Miller. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had to shuffle things around. And Andrews Pete is awful, by the way. I love tackle. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't want, again, I don't want to harp on it, but I, I think the offensive line will, will be a lot better come the regular season with Colton Miller there. So your run game is going to be a lot better. The other thing is, Let's remember the Raiders had a quarterback competition, so they weren't going to run the ball a whole lot against the right. against the Cowboys. So I don't really take anything from the run game against the Cowboys. What I will say is that on that first drive, that dis that first disjointed drive from Gardner Minshew, Zamir White had a big uh, had a big run. I believe you mentioned it was yeah. about seventeen, 17. yards. Yep. 17. So he showed burst there mm-hmm. uh, on that on that early drive, and it was good to see. Uh, I believe he had a touchdown in that first game against the Minnesota Vikings. So he, you know, he's getting that goal. He got that goal line work in there too. 
Uh, so what what I like the burst. He has the size, obviously. You know, neutral. He's going to split the carries with Alexander Madison. What I don't like is if the Raiders have some injuries on that offensive line. Not only they may now Garden Minshew compensate for some of that with his mobility, but how is that going to impact the run game yeah. where the holes aren't there for the running backs to run through? And Jackson Powers Johnson, I, I just have the, I really wanted to see him get some action. He came back obviously last week, but he did not play. And I don't expect him to play. I haven't seen Pierce. He said he's not playing any starter. So I'm assuming he's not going to play this kid either, especially coming off the injury and, and just focus on getting him ready for week one, which in itself uh, will, will be interesting unless they decide not to start him in week one and just let him ease back in. We'll see how that goes. But that offensive line and getting them healthy is more important than playing them in preseason games. Yeah, he's not going to start week one. There's no way you miss that much time in the offseason program. They're going to stick mm -hmm. you out there against the Chargers defensive line. Mm -hmm. I know Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa are on the edges, but when those guys are looping stud inside, your, your guards are going to be under pressure. So I don't think they're going to throw him out there week one. It'll be Cody White here, in my opinion. Uh, but you assume that once Jackson Powers Johnson is ready to go, it'll be another boost to your offensive line. And I said this uh, weeks ago, that you can lament or or judge Antonio Pierce and Tom Telesco's decision at quarterback. You can be worried about the rushing attack. It starts with the offensive line. If your offensive line plays well, usually your entire offense looks a lot better. If your offensive yeah. line crumbles, whoever's the quarterback, you're going to have a tough day regardless. But one thing I will say, and I think we're going to talk a little bit about the offensive line. I talked about Andrews Pete probably being a guy you either have as a backup guard or you cut him altogether. <laughs> <laughs> what about DJ Glaze? I, I, I'm i starting yeah. to come around and say maybe we have a, a right tackle. Now that we know who our quarterback is, I think the mm -hmm. biggest competition might be at right tackle. Their mother keeps getting hurt. He's injured both hands at practice, and DJ Glaze has looked pretty good. Yeah, I think that's that's one of the question marks that I have going into these last few weeks of – of the off season and getting geared up for for one. And, and listen, I was doubtful. I, I called glaze a project. I thought he would take a year or two to Perfect. develop. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do believe that, Hey, that's what you don't know. Camp. Somebody goes out, works hard, shows that they're able to compete and do it. So, so good for Tom Telesco, whatever he saw in DJ glaze and the fact that he could maybe have a positive impact right away would be great. Cause we haven't seen it from a lot of high round draft picks from the Raiders <laughs> recently. So that's nice. Uh, but I do think that it's going to be fun to watch what happens there. And, and I agree with you. Before we go to the break, Mo, our final break, and then we're going to get to the, the, the Raider Nation mailbag and your messages, is I saw some haters' remorse and some I told you so's from people, and this just blew my mind, after Minshew or after the game on Saturday, I should say, and both quarterbacks kind of looking putrid, uh, was, oh, see, they should have kept Derek Carr. Now, again, and I saw some writers – uh, that, that I appreciate and respect who said no. And I agree with them, which is no, you needed to move on. Now, the fact that they didn't have a great plan behind that last year, of course, different regime, their backup plan was Jimmy Garoppolo. Yes, that was screwed up too, clearly. But this, oh, Derek Carr, look, I watched Derek Carr yesterday or Sunday, whatever day it was, <laughs> again, you know, in the preseason and our good friend Kelly Kreiner was messaging us jokes about it. Look, it, you, it wouldn't be any different if Derek Carr was with the Raiders. Is he better than Gardner Minshew at this point in his career? Perhaps. Does he have more talent? Yeah, but I don't know. So so looking backwards, I don't care if it's in your life or with your football team, is never good. You are where you are. you got to deal with the issue now. Your two quarterbacks are O'Connell and Minshew. So whatever happened in the past, it's not worth lamenting over. So just move past it. That's my advice for you. You don't have to take it. You can say F you. I don't care. That's cool. And I'll respect <laughs> that. But I'm just telling you, it's never good, Mo, to look in the past. The Raiders need to be solely focused on the now and the future. <sighs> uh oh, there's the sign. Can we just, can we just uh, look? Derek Carr is a better quarterback than Aiden O'Connell and Garner Minshew right now, but yeah. we have to let it go. He's, right. it, he's, a, he's a New Orleans Saint right now. Correct. They made a move, and I said, and I said it then, they needed to have a better plan after moving off from Derek Carr. It was Jimmy Garoppolo. I spoke on this show for weeks and said I didn't like the the change mm -hmm. for Jimmy Garoppolo. I said Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be a flop. People told me I was wrong. Mm -hmm. What happened? But can we just move on? Because yeah. the There's Raiders no are going to play the Saints this year. Derek Carr is a new say He's under contract. He also has a new trade clause over there. So let, can yeah. we just please move on? Please. Yes. You can't live in the past. Because then you don't move forward. So there you go. Okay, speaking of moving forward, we are going to take our final break here on the Tuesday edition of Silver and Black. Today, 
When we come back, it's your time. That's right. We're going to take calls. we got four calls to get to today. So we will do that again. If you want to be part of the show, 702-900-7869 is the number. And um, we're getting a lot more calls now. And uh, especially on the Thursday show, we're a little more limited because that show goes on radio and we have more limited time. So if we don't get to your calls, don't get upset. You can keep calling in. We'll eventually get to them. It's just like if you were calling in live and you didn't get through by the time the show ended. A little bit of the same thing. But we try to get everybody in. Uh, we might even add a, an extra show. I mean, we did an extra segment from last week to get make sure we got through nine calls, a ton of calls, which was great. Uh, so so just keep calling in and we will get to you. But don't, don't take it personal if you don't make it one show because I'll probably make it up to you the next show. Uh, just figure on it. But we're going to get to that when we come back here with Mo and Scott. This is Silver and Black today. Raider Nation, Scott Branson here at Silver and Black today. Are you looking for a new sports book this football season? BetUS is the answer. They offer the fastest payouts in the industry with 125% sign-up bonus up to $2,000 or a 200% crypto deposit bonus. Enjoy a fast and easy deposit and withdrawal process with 24-7 personalized service, 365 days a year. BetUS provides live wagering on all major games and the best betting variety in the business. Plus, Get 10% back on your net losses twice a year. Did you know that BetUS can give you your very own personal account manager? Check out the special offer from Silver and Black today. Use our BetUS link found below in the description, and good luck. Enough of hearing us talk about the Raiders. It's time to hear from you. Any Oakland Raider fan, Las Vegas Raider fan, stand up. On this edition of the Raider Nation Mailbag. That black hole rock and rolling. Don't be a wallflower. Be a part of the show. Leave your question or message by calling 702-900-7869. That's 702-900-7869. Or drop us an email at mail at silverandblacktoday.com. All right. It's time, Mo. It's time to hear from the peeps. Raider Nation. How, how are we gonna? How are the calls gonna be? Are they gonna be dire? Are they gonna be optimistic? Are they gonna be in the middle? Mixed bag. Mixed It'll bag? be a mixed bag. Based on what I've seen on Twitter, it's gonna be yeah. a mixed bag because there are some people who wanted Gardner Minshew to start, and they're absolutely excited. They're happy. Shout out to, to to my new Twitter buddy Darth Mish, Minshew on uh, on the <laughs> X. He had a whole Twitter handle dedicated to Gardner Minshew. He's happy. I I love what Raider Nation does, and I don't know if other fan bases do it because I mostly, even though I cover the entire league like you do, I don't pay attention to the fan stuff like I do on our show and with Raider Nation, right. of course. Right. It's so funny how they switch their handles depending on what's happening, and it's just, it's so creative. We, it's so cool. We've had DC's hair, right? We, and it was Jimmy Garoppolo's had, hair. We had Jimmy Garoppolo's hair. Yeah. We've, we have, then it we was have dark mustache. It was O'Connell's, Wasn't it O'Connell's mustache. Must yes. We, we we got now we got Darth Minshew, and we got all types of Minshew Twitter handles, and they're they're growing by the day. It's it's also it's, of course. I always get a kick out of it. Yes, the Minshew mania, including our good friend Murph over at Raider Fan Radio. If you buy a T-shirt from them, by the way, it goes to the One Nation Foundation. They have some Minshew mania silver and black shirts over there, which are pretty cool. So uh, I will not steal the idea for our own T-shirt store, but it's it's pretty good. So um, we're think, gonna think have Murph was a Minshew guy, by the way. I think he's happy. He, I mean, yes. I know he's happy because regardless of who's going to pick, Mur Murph uh, is an optimist. It, it, if, it, if it was Carter Bradley, Murph is going to go yes. to bat for Carter Bradley. And that's what I like yes. about Murph. That is, if he's on your side, he's on your side. He's not going to be wishy-washy <laughs> about it. Always a great dude. Like we say, we, we, yeah. he looks at it from a fan perspective. We don't always agree on stuff. But we're good friends. And uh, him and the crew down there do so much great work for the nation. points, though. Yes, he does. He's very point. smart. No. Listen, they're all smart on the show. They know what they're talking about, which is great. So uh, I would uh, tell you to subscribe to their show as well. It's good stuff on Wednesday nights and live. It's funny as heck. I was on one time. I may have had a little to drink that day. <laughs> it was uh, it was fun. So if you missed it, you can go, go check it out. No, I didn't have them take it down, even though there's embarrassing moments. But hey, it is what it is. All right. We're going to get back to you now. And uh, the first caller, Mo, is up in Northern California, of course, uh, where the Raiders were born and established up in Oakland. And so here is NorCal Raider with the first call of the Raider Nation mailbag for this Tuesday. Hey, Mo. Hey, Scott. How's it going? Um, this is NorCal Raider. Um, just listening to the podcast, and I love how you guys are, like, objective about stuff and realistic. That's the reason I like calling you guys, because you guys just can hear your guys' calls, and, like, you can let people talk respectfully and not criticize somebody. Um, 
and um, and some other places you can't do that. Um, you know, but that's one thing. There was a caller who called last a couple of days ago about about he wasn't really happy with the Pierce hire, and I, I'm kind of on the same boat. And I'm going to explain why because um, I don't think I don't think uh, Mark Davis did his due diligence. I mean, he went off of a few games, and just because he cleaned it up for him, but he needed to do his due diligence, like like a lot of research, and and really, really, and then. Uh, and then if you get a, if you get a coach next time, if this doesn't work out, get an actual coach, not a coordinator anymore. It's time to get a head coach, someone that knows how to, how to, you know, deal with the structure and everything like that. And, um, you know, I'm okay with trimming the fat when it comes to the team. You know, we have a, we have a lot of, you know, we have Devante, um, we have Max and everybody else on there, but it doesn't do us anything if we're only going to win six games. Mm. I'm, I'm on, I'm honestly okay with making trades and building for the future when you get a coach. And then you know tank for so and so for a year, and because um, I I feel like we're going to be a six win six to nine win team next year, and we're going to because the only positive is is next year is if the team does well, at least the defense will be partially built. I don't know exactly if um if our core if our coordinator is going to stick around um from our defensive coordinator, but um, at least it'll be partially built, and all we'll need is a quarterback more likely in the first round. You know, we might have to trade away Devontae or something like that. So I just don't believe in keeping players like that just because we say we have them. What are we doing with them? You have to, you have to do something with these players. Not just say, I have that. Devontae doesn't make any sense. What, what, do we, what does he do for us? We need 12 games. We won the playoffs. No, we're not. So that's all I got to say about that. Uh, thank you for your time, guys. Looking forward to hearing the next week's podcast. All right. There you go. NorCal Raider. Great call. And Mo, I'll let you talk about Adams and some of the players, the defense stuff. I want to start with the Pierce thing because, because yes, he mentioned he was not a big fan of it either. And he laid out his story there. Listen, I'm giving Antonio Pierce benefit of the doubt because I understand Mark and I don't disagree with what he said there that you do due diligence. In fact, back during the process, I think we were actually critical of that. We said, look, yes, yes, he, he might be your guy, Antonio Pierce, and that's fine. But why aren't you talking to more people? I mean, real candidates, right? And, and so I agree with him there. But I think in this case, I think Mark Davis, from my outside perspective and, and seeing it happen, he listened to a lot of different people when it came to uh, hiring Ziegler and McDaniels. He listened to other people in the past about hiring these people. This time, I think he went with his gut and what his players wanted. So I can see how that happened. And I'm not overly critical about it. Yes, I would have liked to see more due diligence. But, you know, I, you got to give Antonio Pierce the opportunity and see what he does. He may surprise the people who don't support or at least are lukewarm on him being hired as coach. And we'll see this year. I, I wouldn't give up on this year. Seven, eight wins, yes. But man, I'll tell you what, it's a thin margin between six, seven wins and eight, nine, sometimes even 10 wins if you get hot, depending what happens. So, so I would say with that, give it a little bit of time. If we get through three or four weeks and things are looking a little putrid, then I get it. But um, maybe I'm being overly optimistic, Mo. I don't know. But when it comes to the defense, when it comes to uh, what he was talking about, uh, Devontae Adams and his trade value, all that stuff, talk a little bit about that. So first I'll say there are some fire AP tweets already out. <laughs> it popped up in my report live chat. There are some people season. already yeah. out on Antonio Pierce. That's very crazy. wishy-washy. That's but about, about the players and assets, I do agree with Noah Cal Raider about, about assets. Mm -hmm. I think some fans, not all fans, some fans get too emotionally attached to these players. You know, you buy the jerseys, you wear the jerseys. Sometimes you meet them uh, in person when you go to these games or practices. So I get the emotional attachment there. But NorCal Raider is thinking of it as a GM. He's yeah. not thinking of it as, oh, my gosh, we got Devontae Adams. He's thinking of it as, how can I use Devontae Adams as an asset if he's not helping us get to the playoffs and win more games? So from a GM perspective, that's where NorCal Raider is coming from. And that's mm -hmm. usually where we come from as, as, a, as a show. Like we usually look at it from a GM perspective, not from a fan perspective. So I get his reasoning for wanting to maybe move on from Devontae Adams. If the Raiders are, let's say, again, two and five by the trade deadline and the team is offering you a high draft pick, Devontae Adams is frustrated, not happy with the quarterback decision. I think it becomes a, a topic of discussion. I know a lot of fans don't want to hear that, but that's the reality of it. If you're a team that's at the bottom of the barrel and you're in need of a quarterback, you're going to start moving assets. We see it every year before the trade deadline happens. Oh, yeah. Now, I will say already, even before the Raiders even play a football game, there is a lot of Devontae Adams trade chatter. And I would say pump the brakes on it for now because we don't know what's going to happen. What if the Raiders do start off 3-1 and Gardner Mitchell is pretty decent? 
right? Yeah, yeah. Then you're not you you're hanging up the phone when teams are calling about Devontae Adams. So what I will say is that let's see what it looks like for the first quarter of the season, at least before we crank up the Devontae Adams trade rumors. But I do get what Nora Carrot is saying about about players being assets and not being emotionally attached to them. But yeah. the trade deadline is is right after the election day. We'll see what the Raiders are at that point. Well, and I think too, and this is what we we talked a lot about this last year too, when when you had a lot of the people who were like, well, tank, 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 which teams don't do. Now, I rephrase it to the point of what NorCal Raider was talking about, which is start building for the future. future. The issue is, I think this team was in this weird purgatory of you're pretty good. So you're it's not like you're starting over. It's not like some of these other teams that you look at who were like Washington commanders and these teams who are kind of, actually they're not as bad as I said they were, but you're starting from a base level where, man, you're already a three, four win team, right? The Raiders were not. And so they have a defense that's almost built out. I mean, yes, they still have needs there, especially depth and, and a couple starters here and there, but, but they're closer. You're closer to the playoffs than you are further from the playoffs. And that's to me always the worst place to be in the NFL is to be in purgatory because you don't have enough capital like just to happen. All these quarterbacks went, they couldn't get up there and get them because they, they didn't finish poor enough. So I get it. But to me, when you're in that position, you gotta try, you got you can't show that you're not gonna try to win. If you only won two games last year, everybody's gonna accept that you're selling off Devontae Adams, you're selling off this guy, you're selling off that guy. Everybody's on board because they just want to get better. But in this position, one more, much more difficult, Mo. And I said before that while every year it seems like I would pick the rest win three, four games, for the most part, for the most part over the past you know, half decade, they've been mediocre. So they haven't quite bottomed out. Like they've had some bad – like they had a 6-11 season with Josh McDaniels that was disappointing because you thought they were going to be a lot better after they acquired Devontae Adams from the Packers and they had Carr and Adams together. Yeah. But for the most part, they've been a mediocre team, so they haven't quite bottomed out. But they're not a perennial contender, and and and, that, and as you said, they're in that weird middle ground where you it could go either way based on how the season goes. You could be a team that says we, we're just going to rebuild because we're mediocre, or we're just going to go for it. We're going to try to win now because we have some parts of this team that are pretty good. And I think that's what Josh McDaniels tried to do. He brought in Chandler Jones. We know what happened there. Yeah. He brought in Devontae Adams, and you thought, okay, this is a team that's contending. Derek Carr is there. You bring in Derek Carr's buddy, Devontae Adams. You bring in Chandler Jones. Again, you know what happened there. But that team was built to contend right now, and it didn't work. So then they had to take a step back. And I think Tom Telesco is doing a similar – taking a similar path where, okay, we have this defense that was ninth in scoring last year. We have Max – you know, we have Max. We have Devontae. We have Devontae for now. Let's try to win now. And I mm-hmm. think Pierce said it during his announcement for the QB that – we chose the quarterback that's going to give us the best chance to start fast. So Pierce is thinking, let's win now. They're not yeah. thinking toward the future yet. Now, again, if it falls apart like it did under the first year under McDaniels and Ziggler, then I think you'll start to see them take a step back. Okay, make some trades. Not working. Prepare yeah. for the draft. Play right. some young guys. They don't like to say tanking, but what they do is they play these young guys that you know aren't as good as some of these veterans, and you know right. you're going to lose some games. And they say, well, <laughs> we're focused on development. As development to- yes so yes maybe a fancy word for tanking tanking <laughs> you're not trying to lose on <laughs> yes. purpose you're just trying to give your young guys just, an opportunity to learn develop- on the job right we're just developing our young guys yeah and and listen i i look at this too again people forget whether you like the pierce hire or not he only got a two-year contract so you you know if, if somebody's not going to become the coach for two years if you're stripped down the roster now, if you're a coach, a established coach, and you come in and you get an eight-year deal, sure. Yeah, I can go through two or three years. Yeah, no problem. But Antonio Pierce is in a position where he's got to win, too. And, and I feel for the guy because he's got to do it. And so he wants to prove himself. He's got a great opportunity to do it. Uh, but it would suck if he said, okay, Antonio, you got the job. Congratulations. We're just we're trading everybody now. <laughs> you got nobody left. You're going to be a two-win team. Nah, that's not going to help him. So we'll see how it all goes. But great call, as always, by NorCal Raider. Now we go to Pastor Mike behind bars. Here's Pastor Mike. Scott, Mo, Pastor Mike behind bars, calling on Sunday. So day after the last <laughs> preseason game gets the Cowboys and the decision to go with Minshew, I was kind of surprised. Um, don't know how I feel about it, to be honest with you. Mm. I was thinking after the game, ah, yeah, they'll probably roll with AOC. But they decided to go with Gardner. So the guard dog, I guess that's what we just have to work with 
don't we? And we'll have to live <laughs> with that decision. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. I just thought I'd just go and give my two cents on believing that we're going to have a decent season, I hope. I don't know. Over, under, six and a half games. I was going over, but I'm not sure now, <laughs> to be honest with you. But, hey, I'm not the GM. I'm not the coach. I don't get paid the big bucks. So we'll roll with it and live with the decision, right? Have a great game. Great. <laughs> there you go. Pastor Mike doing work with our incarcerated men and women. So thank you, man. We appreciate the call as always. Hey, listen, I, I what he said there makes a lot of sense. I think that's where a lot of Raider fans were surprised. And it's not a let me try to, to articulate this. It's not a bad surprise, not like a shock, but it, it is a little bit to you just figure, well, you got this young guy. Why don't you play him? And Okay, but I get it. So I think it's people don't – and, and, and Pastor Mike said it best. I'm not sure how I feel. I think a lot of people in that same boat, Mo. I'll tell you how I feel about it when I heard the decision. First of all, again, I thought Aiden O'Connell would win the job simply because – I did too. Younger Absolutely. guy, should, should have more upside. He was a little more consistent down-to-down drive-to-drive, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm not surprised that he chose – I'm not entirely surprised that he chose Gardner Minshew simply because it was close. And he did say, as I said in the first segment, that my other guy really stepped up and won the job. It was a decision that had to be made, and it was pretty close throughout the entire offseason – between a very, let's be honest, a very uh, mediocre, lackluster battle there. Yeah, so yeah. regarding the issue starting, I actually feel more confident that the Raiders go over the six and a half. I've been pounding the table for six and a half wins, over six and a half wins for the Raiders. I actually feel a little more confident for the reason I spoke about earlier is that now you don't have to deal with the inexperienced mistakes of a quarterback who hasn't played a full season, Aiden O'Connell. If you're going to throw Aiden O'Connell in there, which I thought was logical because you wanted to develop, you don't have to worry about, okay, so you're going to stare down the receiver and throw a pick six as he did against the <laughs> backups against, against the Cowboys. Right. You're not going to get that from Minshew. Minshew has some other issues, don't get me wrong. Minshew's not like some upper-tier starter. Minshew, as I said, is going to put you in a lot of third and longs because he's going to scramble around and miss his first and second read, and then you you wind up having to throw the ball away or, or throw the ball into, into coverage with three guys around your receiver. So I think that's going to piss Devontae Adams off, by the way. But yes, uh, he has Minshew has his warts, but at least, you know, again, he has the mobility to compensate for offensive line issues if you have them and he can give you that big play. I tweeted this during the Cowboys game. I want to see at least a few deep shots of Trey Tucker every week. Remember how they started using Henry Ruggs? Unfortunately, yeah. he made a tragic decision. But before Henry Ruggs went off jail, right, prison, they were throwing deep shots to Henry Ruggs a few times a game under Gruden. I want to see the same thing. With Trey Tucker, we saw it with Gardner Minshew, so I assume we're going to see it in the regular season. But the big plays, the splash plays, are going to be there. It's going to be a roller coaster ride, of course. There's going to be some a lot of there's going to be some good and bad in there, but you're going to get the big plays. And I think that's another thing Antonio Pierce is thinking about. That look, he he joked and said we we need to score 24 points at minimum. And I think he, that that was the aim there. That with the big plays, you'll be able to move the ball down the field and chunk yardage and score in a lot more drives. Whereas Aiden O'Connell. Maybe they, they were thinking we may have to dink and duck a little more with Aiden O'Connell than we do with Gardner Minshew. Yeah, and I think with the uns and you mentioned it earlier, and, and Pastor Mike, thanks for the call. You mentioned earlier too, just with the uncertainty with the offensive line. Hopefully everybody's healthy, right? But mm -hmm. but you might have a little patchwork there at the beginning. And so the fact that Minshew, yes, he does sometimes break out of the pocket too early, but he's got a little more ability to be mobile back there. And so maybe that's what they're deciding. And then we'll see how it goes. So uh, good stuff, Pastor Mike. We appreciate the call. All right. Now we're going to John up in Oroville, the second show in a row he's called in. Here's John. Hey, Scott and Mo. It's John from Oroville. Feels like I'm getting ready for a funeral after finding out <laughs> the Cardinal will be our starting quarterback. Three points and five possessions. What, 45% passing completion? <laughs> I just can't believe that's the uh, game that sent him over the top, so to speak. And the only solace I can take is that maybe Luke Getsy's the one that made this terrible choice, not <laughs> AP, I'm hoping. Um, kind of reminds me of when I was at the L.A. Coliseum years ago watching the Raiders lose in overtime 30-27 to to the Buffalo Bills. In that game, Scott Norwood had missed three or four field goals to finally hit one in overtime to beat us. And as I was leaving the Coliseum, heading eight hours home, 
to Northern California, I can remember the only thing that made me feel better was listening to some post-game Raiders talk on the radio. So I'm hoping you guys can talk me off the ledge and say it's not going to be as bad as it feels, but losing this year to evaluate Aiden and, and, and having Gardner be our starting quarterback, knowing what we've got in Gardner, knowing what I saw against Dallas. I mean, he's failing – throws over people's heads, he's short hopping them to receivers, and that's our guy. I, I'm just depressed about it, but uh, hopefully you guys can tell me it's all going to be all right. All right, guys, have a great day, and uh, let's go Raiders! Let's make something happen. We need to. <laughs> John. John from Oroville, great call. Mo, I'm going to let you be the psychologist here and tell him why he shouldn't freak out. So, John, sit on the silver and black couch just for a minute with me here, okay? I understand the logic here, why you're a little pessimistic, not a little, a lot pessimistic about this decision. Again, we thought Aiden O'Connell would start for the reason that if you have upside, more accurate, you pointed out the completion percentage. I get all of that. A lot of fans are with you on that. But again, I will say, and I, and I made this point in the first segment, let's remember your best pass catcher, Devonta Adams, did not play in the preseason at all. Brock Bowers looked good against the Minnesota Vikings. It's a tight end friendly offense. He did not play against the Cowboys. Colton Miller, we assume he's going to be back from shoulder surgery. Your best offensive lineman did not play, right? So with those three guys alone, the offense should look a lot better than what you saw last Saturday. Now, the short hopping passes, the misfiring, that's just something you're going to have to deal with with the Garner Minshew. That's one of the wars that he has, right? So with the positive, he can move around. He can make things happen. He's the make crap happen guy. Sometimes, and as I said, the routine plays get away from him. And I think what they're going to have to do is say, hey, Gardner, look, we got these two big tight ends, these two big targets in Brock Bowers and Michael Mayer. Don't make this difficult, right? If, yeah. if they're open, hit the tight end. Because, again, this is going to be a tight end friendly offense with Luke Getzey. He has shown that as a pass game corner. He has shown that in Chicago. Again, I bring up Cole Komet a lot on this show. Robert Tanyan had a career here under Luke Getzey as a pass game coordinator. This is going to be a very tight end from the offense. I think Antonio Pierce even said this offense is going to, this passing offense is going to go as a tight ends go. No disrespect to Devontae Adams, but if you guard a Minshew and if you're that coaching staff, you want Gardner Minshew to get the easy layups, the easy completions. I think you have to really emphasize the tight end play. And fortunately, the Raiders are able to do that with Browers, Bowers and Mayer at the position. Yep. I agree 100%. And uh, don't freak out yet, man. We'll see how it all not goes. Yet. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Depending. Not. It's too early, so we'll see. But but Antonio Pierce did say they all decided together. So he owns it. Getsy owns it. Telesco owns it. They're all on the same page there. So there you go. All right. Uh, now we're going to go out to our last call from Alan in Canada. Yes, we're going north of the border. A. Eh? Sorry, Alan. Mm -hmm. You know, as Americans, we like to do that. Okay, here we go. Hi, Scott Moe. This is LT, uh, Alan from Canada again. Uh, my last call went on a little bit long, but uh, <laughs> if you want to just play this one or play that one, spice it doesn't matter. But anyways, the question I had for you, Scott, was you've been inside the belly of the beast. You know how organizations work and, uh, you know, the difference between leaders, managers, and mentors. And I think Aiden O'Connell's leadership style is really one that takes time to develop. He really is one of those guys that needs to know the most or be the oldest or be the most experienced before he will be a true leader on the team. Hmm. That's why I'm not worried about him sitting for a year and Mark Minshew getting the start. Start. I think it's actually good for O'Connell because he could legitimately come into his own in his 30s and be an amazing quarterback for a decade because of the nature of his leadership style. Anyways, I was hoping... You could comment that. Do you agree or not? And if so, if you could explain it in a more short-winded way than me, it'd be great. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thanks a lot. You guys are great. Love you both. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Thanks, Alan. We appreciate that, man. And, I, you know, I, the leadership stuff is interesting because I think – I don't disagree that having – that that Aiden O'Connell may – there might be value for him to, to, to sit and watch Gardner Minshew, who's been around a bit and been a journeyman. Um, at the same time, leadership can develop. I think guys can get better at it and command the huddle more. Um, whether or not Aiden O'Connell is that kind of guy, we don't know, right? And 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 also, too, I think not lost in this is coaching, right? So Antonio Pierce said during the offseason he wanted Aiden O'Connell to be more vocal. He specifically said vocal. Now, some guys are never vocal uh, unless it's in the huddle or practice, whatever. 
So we'll have to see what happens. I again, I I've not seen anything yet, and this is nothing against the young man that to tell me that he will develop into a franchise quarterback. I could be wrong. If I am great, I just don't see it right now, Mo. I think I think can he be a better leader and a better quarterback? Absolutely. He's a smart, smart guy. And he's got skills. So I think Aiden O'Connell will be in the NFL for a long time. I really do. I'm just not where maybe Allen is thinking that maybe he'll develop into the franchise guy. Now, Antonio Pierce mentioned leadership. He said Gardner Minshew's, you know, basically his, I'm paraphrasing, his personality is infectious. And he mm -hmm. mentioned leadership when he made his decision. And didn't mm -hmm. we have a whole, we had a whole segment whole talking segment. About, about being a leader. You said they need that alpha dog in the huddle. Now, at right. this point in his career, obviously, Garner Minshew has been around the block a lot more. He has more of that, more of those leadership qualities. And I think at what the caller was getting to, I believe it was Alan from Canada, was saying, you know, I think the question comes down to, is leadership innate? Like, is it, do you have it or you or do you not have it and great, you just great won't question. develop it? And I think it's, because I hear this a lot. And I've, you know, I've also worked in the office area where I was mm -hmm. <laughs> promoted to a supervisory position. And what you have to be careful about is you can develop certain parts of your personality so that you become a better leader, but you also want to be yourself. And I think if Aiden O'Connell goes out there, he tries to mimic Minshew, it would come off as inauthentic and people are going to see through that. So you have to be careful about uh, your development as a leader and still being yourself. So you have to be within yourself. And I think Aiden O'Connell, for what we've seen now, I don't know Aiden O'Connell personally. Mm -hmm. But he just doesn't seem like an overly vocal guy. Not that he won't correct guys if he has to, but you also have to understand with his age, you know, is he really going to be barking at Devontae Adams mm -hmm. if Devontae Adams is not, you know, on his assignment? I, I highly doubt it. You know, I, maybe he maybe he would. Who knows? But I, I just don't see that now with, with experience. You, you kind of have that cachet. You kind of have that ability to talk to guys, pull guys aside and see what you saw and say, hey, need you to do it this way we need you to run the route this way but i just don't see that quality from out of aiden o'connell right now right and i think that's what the raiders are going to need not specifically for Devonte adams but for someone to take ownership of that offense and and i think antonio pierce clearly said that from a from a guy who runs the offense the way they want to run it and i think he said he he runs the offense the way we want to run this offense and i'm paraphrasing again that when you have a veteran and again, he's played on some bad teams, Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, now he almost led the close to the playoffs last year, had mm -hmm. to step in for Anthony Richardson. You have a veteran who's dealt with a lot of adversity. I'm not saying Aiden O'Connell has it because we, we know his personal story. We had someone come on here and talk about it. But as far as being on the field, in the game, dealing with changes on, on your offense, the coaching staff, having a bad team that isn't expected to, to do much, having lesser talent, because Garner Mitchell has had lesser talent around him, I think oh, yeah. that's what they're leaning on. I think Vic Tafer said it too. He said experience was a deciding factor. Mm -hmm. that's, this is what Vic Tafer tweeted on Sunday after the decision made was made. He put it in his article in The Athletic, I believe. He said experience was a deciding factor, along with, of course, the mobility and all that other stuff, big plays. But he specifically said experience. And I think having the experience in the leadership role really tilted the balance in Gardner Minshew's favor. Absolutely. Well said, Alan in Canada. Thanks, man. Hopefully uh, you got what you needed from that. And we'll see what happens with Aiden O'Connell. I He's going to play this year. Just I, I have no I, doubt. I have no doubt about that. So we'll have to see how that all rolls out. Uh, but uh, that's the way it goes. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this show. We wrapped up just about an, a little over an hour this show. So we appreciate uh, you guys being a part of it with the calls and all that jazz. So thank you so much for being part of the Raider Nation Mailbag. Again, you can call us 702-900-7869 or email us mail at silverandblacktoday.com. We will get you there. Mo, what do you got the rest of the week? Anything you need to tell folks about? First of all, I want to thank everyone who joined me for my Bleach Report live on Monday, where we talked about the pros and cons of Garner Minshew starting. I will have a Sports Not Peace up on, I believe, maybe Wednesday, where I'll, I'll pick the winners of the remaining position battles that the Raiders have. Again, we know, obviously, who the quarterback's going to be, but there are some other battles out there. Cornerback, though, I think Ja'Cory Bennett has that locked up, but I talked about right tackle, maybe some of the back of rotational spots. Does Tyree Wilson start the season as the third edge rusher? Does Byron Young get cut? Because he didn't have a good showing in the preseason either. So still a lot to talk about as far as positions are concerned. I'll end it with that over on Sports Night and then have a fresh week over here on Silver Black Today with you, Scott. And we'll talk Ooh. about 
the beginning of the season. Week one will be up. upon us on our doorstep. Bum, bum, bum. It's coming. I can't wait. It's going to be fun. I invite you to check out the piece I wrote on the Raiders quarterback situation. Just laid it out. Is what it is type of thing. But check it out up on sportsnot.com now. Linked below as well as Mo's latest piece down there too. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your audio. If you're watching us on video, thank you so much for being part of the chat. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notifications bell. And we will be back with you on Thursday, unless there's some breaking news or something else pops up first, but that's the plan right now is we will see you on Thursday. Mo, take care, my man. Be safe out there in those streets. Talk to you soon, Scott. All right. For our producer, Mike Robbie, for Mo Moten, I am Scott Colbrands, and this has been Silver and Black Today, an Odyssey Sports original podcast covering your Las Vegas Raiders. We'll see you next time.